Hey guys, welcome to a new video. What you're seeing right now is me studying the art of creating insane prompts to create some insane art here with Leonardo AI. I'm gonna today I'm gonna teach you and I'm gonna break down how I actually started learning this kind of stuff and how I started creating some really cool art. So what you guys are looking at is you're looking at an enhanced formula. It's called an enhanced formula within Stable Diffusion. If you're not familiar, Leonardo AI is run or, or it runs off of, uh, uh, excuse me, Stable Diffusion. And Stable Diffusion has documents on how their, um, their uh, GPUs, which is basically their processors and their video cards and things like that, uh, process certain things, right? And based on the words that you use and the formats that you use, it will understand or you will give more understanding to it. And so I kind of want to show you the prompt here and I kind of want to break some things down. And the first thing that I do is if I want a style of an image within a background color that looks somewhat flat, I'm going to label it as a t-shirt design, right? The reason why that is is because first off, I want to be able to easily control for the background like for example i can remove the background somewhat easily and also it just saves me time when it comes down to editing now can i go here and have an image that you know encompasses all four borders like something like this i absolutely can and then edit certain things out but obviously that will take longer right so i start off with a t-shirt design and as i give it some descriptive text of the main object so this is the main object detailed illustration face ninja dragon right face ninja dragon and then i give it the codes the color codes now if you could see here i'm using the color palette generator the ai color palette generator with providing me different kinds of you know color palettes i mean it's just infinite i can keep clicking and it will provide me with different palettes i can even export them so i can click if like for example if i'm going to use it within canva i just click and i'll, I'll actually kind of show you that in a second so for example here i have the color palette that you just saw me download i inputted it into canva right just like this you can kind of see and if i'm doing any kind of editing like with an element so let's just say i have this element of this circle and i want to apply it to any one of these colors within canva i could just click here scroll down and it will provide me those same exact colors in the color palette so i can kind of you know match different things and this is useful when i'm creating different shirts different fonts you know like i have see different designs here that i'm working on and basically right it creates these different colors that i'm working with so anyways the point here is the first thing that i'm doing after the object is i'm defining its color bounds and the way i do this is first i give it the hex code and then i add either pluses to it or i add it in brackets with a number and i'll explain what these things mean so when i read the documentation around stable diffusion and how to communicate with it and, and things like that one of the things that really kind of took my focus was this plus effect and basically with this plus effect is i want certain things that are more pronounced in the image like for example you could see how these both both designs have this pronounced orangish red kind of hue to it well that's because certain color codes certain hex codes are emphasized so you could see here i have three pluses for this one and i have two pluses here the more pluses you add the more it will be multiplied through a multiple of so imagine like you have something to the third power or to the fourth power or to the second power right like squared or cubed or whatever etc you guys know what i'm talking about so uh, you know a basic algebra so what i'm saying here is that's how we're communicating to the ai and then within the brackets here what i'm setting up is i'm cutting i'm setting up a hex code then i'm setting up the colon and then another hex code with a colon and then the number that i want to use so these two colors i want them very very slight right these are these are referred to as elements within a bracket so i'm using these two color codes as elements and if you actually look here if you notice there's something very subtle is this blue tint in both designs and you could see here it's very very subtle and sometimes when the image is being created there are very very small mixtures of colors that you really can't really see and can't really tell and then after that i'm giving it some details 
around certain characteristics of how I want it. For example, if I want grunge, or if I want a gothic feel, or if I want a light, uh, you know, kind of feel, whatever the, the case may be. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create some live so I can show you how things make such a critical difference. All right. So I'm going to basically delete this and we're actually going to go out and find a different prompt that we can use that we can apply for uh, this kind of concept. So I can look here and I think, you know, what? let's just go with one of the ones that are winners. So like, let's, this is a winner. I mean, people like it, it gets a lot of likes. So we'll click on something like this and oh, wow, you can actually see that they're already using some of this format in the prompt. So you could see here, they're using the parentheses, they're using the numbers. Um, let's go ahead and hit remix here and let me kind of spruce this up with my style. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click generate. I want to see what's going to create based on the given format of the prompt. And then when I edit the, the style my way, you guys will see what I'm talking about here. So let's let this load and then we'll work on something together. In the meantime, I'm going to use my AI uh, color palette generator here to come up with some colors that I think would be good for this scenario. So uh, if anybody wants to know where I got the color palette, um, the POD tools site, I'll leave the link in the description, but this is the tool. It's a one-time payment tool. It's not something that you have to you know, pay monthly for or anything like that. This is the tool and you can get it as cheap as $9.99. All right, so anyways, this is the images that arise, which is pretty, pretty nice images, I would say. I mean, you know, I think they look a little bit different than what was presented in the front. I mean, I do think these look a little bit different, but, you know, we can we can kind of go with it here. So I'm going to go back to my AI image generation and let's work with what we currently have. Let me go ahead and refresh this. I'm not sure why it's loading. It already gave us the image. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. I have no idea. Did I click on something? I don't know. But, um, yeah, it already gave us the image. But anyways, let's go ahead and now do some editing. So let's click on our color palette, hit generate palette, and I'm going to see some colors that I want to use. So let's see. I like this color palette, right? The greens here. I'm going to copy this and I'm thinking that I'm going to have less emphasis on the second and the fifth color. Okay. So let me go ahead and first list them here just for my usage. And then what I'm going to do is separate them with commas, okay, comma and space. So comma, space, comma, space, here, comma, space, and comma, space, okay? So now I have these. And what I wanna do is I wanna add less emphasis to this color. So I'll copy it and paste it here. And I wanna give less emphasis to this color, okay, on the color palette. Copy it, paste it here, so I'll put colon, paste it here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to input it within a bracket, uh, kind of like this one. All right. These two brackets. And then I will put another colon right here. And then I will put the parent, uh, the, the, uh, essentially the multiple of how I want it degraded. So in my case, I'm going to put 0 0.1, right? So I want it used, but very, very, very slightly, almost non-existent right? So that might be a certain tone that's going to be added to the green that might make it look slightly different or something like that. And with these, what I want to do is I'm going to over here, I'm going to add plus, plus, plus. I'm going to add here plus, and I'm going to add two pluses here. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I might as you know, what? I'll just add plus, plus, plus as well here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this comment, uh, this extra comma, I'm going to take all these color codes, I'm going to cut them, and then I'm going to put them after wherever the main concept of the video, uh, I was going to say the video, the, the image is, right? So here we have mid shot, centered image, ultra detailed illustration of poise, uh, poison, Eve po uh, posing, redhead, etc. So what I'm going to do here is really, it would work right here, okay? Just like this. And I'm actually going to get rid of this... Um, vector characterization. I don't want that. I don't want it to be a vector. Um, I want it. I'm going to add grunge and I'm going to add a, uh, let's say a, let's use a tetradic or tet tetradic. Let's see. Tetradic, uh, spine 
not spine. Let's use vine and thorn border. Okay. Comma 32 K resolution. Let me get rid of this. I want it to be in like an illustrate format. So best quality, um, that's meaningless. So I'm not going to add that flat colors, flat lights, and we're going to add the word here. Um, luminous. Let me see luminous, right? Com uh, period, uh, comma rather. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to add a colon to it to describe everything in the brackets. Okay. And of course we have redhead. I will take this and that clearly is a defining. I don't know who poison Ivy posing is. Who's poison Ivy. Is that a character? Um, Probably is. Yeah, Poison Ivy. Okay. So, clearly seems like some sort of movie character or something. So, Poison Ivy posing redhead. Uh, let's leave it at that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in here t-shirt design. Right? And then we're going to take mid shot. And we're going to actually mid shot all, all the way. We're even centered image. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to cut it and I'm going to put it past my colors, right? So I'll really put it like somewhere here, okay? Something like this. And what I'm going to do, let's see if I messed anything up here. Ivy Poison Redhead. Okay, there we go. And now let me hit generate. And let's see what kind of generation it creates. Now what I'm doing is I want certain emphasis on certain colors. I want less emphasis on other colors. I also want it more of a t-shirt style design. I want it less... Uh, perfect in terms of the 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 style right I, and when i say perfect i mean i want it look like it was more illustrated and i definitely want it to be more of a grunge type feel and that's exactly what i was looking for look at this guys so i'm clicking this and you could see here the colors in our color palette that i used they're coming out here you could see it in the dress you could see it in the leaves right those were the different tints of green that i wanted and they exist same thing here so we have different tints of green here we have different, you know, tints of the orange, right? Uh, pretty cool. In fact, if you remember in the color palette, there was this bronzish, goldish color. And that was one of the colors that we degraded, right? And you can see here how degraded it is. It's very, it's found very few in the leaves. And sometimes my eye will pick it up and sometimes I won't. Because sometimes it could be blended in one of the natural tones of something else. So here... Right, this was like a uh, it's supposed to be like a, almost like an orange, like here, but it's not. It's cover. It's taking those gold kind of light tones, those bronzes tones, in the color. I can take this now, right, and I can edit it. So I'll show you how what I would do to edit it. So the first thing that I would do is I would look at my tokens, right, and I would say, okay, if I don't have a lot of tokens, I'm gonna download the image as is. If I do have a lot of tokens, I'm going to upscale it, right, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. And so I'm going to use Lumnar here. And by the way, guys, Lumnar is a software. I've spoken about it before. But Lumnar is a software that I use personally for a lot of my AI designs. You guys are seeing some designs here that I've created on this YouTube channel. On my other computer, I have it on a lot of my AI designs. And I have the style that or the setup that I do every single time. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description to the cheapest place where you can find the software, okay? Um, there are different places, different websites where you can actually legitimately buy it. I'm always doing a search on where's the cheapest because I do pay monthly for the software. I do want it constantly updated, things like that. So I'm going to go over here and I take the image, right? And the first thing that I say to myself, okay, I want to be able to separate the background from the actual contents of the image. And I have to think to myself, okay, let's look at the natural errors of the image. So in my case, the only natural error that I could really pinpoint and see is this section here, right? Because of the hand, right? The fingers, whatever the case may be. So I have the perfect idea. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to edit and I'm gonna go to develop. And I want certain colors to stand out more than others, right? So I'm going to go over here to my smart contrast, and that's exactly what smart contrast does. Now, the reason why I'm dragging it so slowly is because I want you to see the effect that it's changing over time. So this is how it's basic, how it basically is in full effect, right? Smart contrast. If I drag it all the way down, it reverts back to its normal, right? So I go here, 
boom now i don't want smart contrast all the way up i do feel like the orange is a little bit too strong for me so i'm going to take it about somewhere there right so a little bit over halfway um, on the right side now that that's taken care of i do want to increase my shadows right or make it a little bit darker so something like this right and so look here this is the original this is what it looks like now okay a little bit of a difference there all right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over here and denoise there's a lot of noise going on in the art and i'm denoising it so you see the difference here what it's doing denoising is just making it a little bit cleaner overall when i end up removing the background and i'll show you what i mean by that okay so now that that's taken care of now it's time to take the design and i could apply some changes to it but i think it's not fully ready I have to use Luminar twice in this situation. I'm going to take the design and I'm going to export it the way it is. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to disk. I'm going to give a, ra a random name and I'm going to export it. Now notice, I didn't upscale the design yet, right? So I didn't drag it into my upscaler. Not yet, because there's something I want to do to it. I'm going to go over here to GIMP and I'm going to open up GIMP. And what GIMP is going to do here is it's going to help me separate the creation that I have. I got to make sure, by the way, I select the right image, right? Because um, this is the original, okay? And let me show you what the changed image looks like. So it looks like this. This is the changed image. And I have reasons as to why I changed it. And I'll show you in a minute when this whole thing is put together and it looks good, right? So I'm going to select now this, this background. And notice... Most of the background is selected with less issues. Why? Because of that denoiser. The reason why the denoiser is so important is because when GIMP selects a color and Fuzzy selects it and, and selects the whole thing, it's selecting it based on the color separation. So if there's a section here that's a little bit darker than the rest of the background, it won't be selected. But because I turned that denoiser all the way up, and I'm not sure if my screen recorder picked it up, but because I turned it all the way up, it makes sure that it gets rid of those natural blemishes, okay? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an alpha channel, right, to make it transparent. And I'm going to hit erase here, and I'm going to erase all the different uh, features that make this thing, or make it non-transparent, right? And I'm just taking my mouse and I'm going over the edges here. So now effectively, as a quick tutorial, this is this can go on a t-shirt right so i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna hit select none right and this is now where i can export the design okay so i'm gonna go over here i'm gonna go to file and i'm gonna go to export as but i'm gonna export it as a png it's originally a jpeg right if i export it as a jpeg it's unfortunately not going to be transparent it's going to be like a regular you know kind of image i don't want that so now that it's exported as a JPEG, now I'm going to put it back into Lumnar Neo in case if I need to change or erase anything. Now you might say, erase anything? What are you talking about? You just erase something. I'll show you what I mean. So you see like, for example, this section here. Look, I want to show you guys. You see like, can I zoom in here? I can zoom in. So let's go to 600 zoom. Let's go all the way up. I want to show you guys what I'm talking about. Like you see something like this. On a t-shirt, guys, now on the computer, it doesn't look like a big of a deal when you zoom out, but on a t-shirt, every little thing is noticeable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this erase button right here, and I'm going to hit erase, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase some of these natural blemishes, right? And I'm going to erase them. All right, guys, so you can see the image here after uploading it into Lumnar. We have a really good image. It's solid. I could, put, you know, upload it onto a T-shirt and it will look pretty decent. But I do want to make some changes just to up the ante. All right. So here on Lumnar, I have an enhanced AI feature. And this feature is cool because with AI, it chooses to accent certain things. So, for example, I want her skin to be maybe a lighter tone, especially in the darker areas. And I also want certain the darker areas to really get a little bit darker. And so that's what it's going to do. It's going to implement certain features into that. So can you see the difference here? It's very slight, but it's it does make a difference, right? So boom. All right, so that's, that's done. I'm going to leave it at 33 for me. 
Now what I like to do is I like to test certain things. I want this to have a little bit more grunge to it, right? I want a little more grunge to it. And I'm actually going to zoom in so you guys can see the emphasis of this, this grunge type. And I'm going to go to film grain here, and I'm going to increase the film grain. Now, what does film grain do? It makes... Do you see the difference here? Look at this, and look at this. This comes down to personal opinion. I think sometimes when you add film grain to the image, it looks more... Uh, vintage almost right and when I mix this with an authentic grunge it's gonna look even better like it's gonna look like it came out of a comic book so I'm adding the film I'm adding this um this film grain here and I'm adding it to a point where it doesn't affect the images uh, you know good consistency but it's definitely visible right it's definitely visible now this is up to you you might like to do it you might not like to do it and then finally, I'm going to go over here into Glow. And what Glow does is it almost has this very, very, very light blurring feature or smoothening feature, but it also brings out certain colors. And because of her white skin, it might not go well, so we'll see how it works. It's all about testing, right? So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go to Glow, just like this. And I can select how much Glow I want or how much lack of glow that I want so you could see here I told you guys earlier I want her skin to be a little bit brighter because then it will give more shadows when the areas that are darker and so I can go like this for example and I think that's good enough for me I think that's that's where I want it so I'm gonna go zoom out here let's zoom out to a hundred percent and you can see the composition now of the image it originally looked like this now it looks like this much different of an image now what I'm gonna do is, and by the way, I could shift the way her body looks. Like, I can make her face look skinnier, face look taller, whatever the case may be. I think she's perfect the way she is. I'm going to go ahead and export this, right? And I'm just going to give it, like, some random title. Boom, save. And this is where I'm going to upload it into Canva now. So, come with me, and we're going to go ahead and work on Canva and turn this into an actual epic shirt. All right, guys. So, I'm back, and I'm on Canva. And you can see here, this is the design here with the film grain, right? If I zoom in, you can see this is the one. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to make sure I kind of set things up here. And by the way, if you guys want to see a future video on how I make these play on word type designs like this, perfectly toasted, or food fight like this one, or from this one, from predator to pillow, slice and dice, uh, iced coffee, iced tea, right? Yeti or not, here I come. If you want to see more designs like this, let me know. I'll make a video on it on the future. But anyways, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this smaller, okay? I, I The only reason I'm making it smaller is because I want to see how I can kind of configure this. Now, mind you, there's an issue here with the design. The design issue is the hands, like this hand is just non-existent and this hand is all weirded out right it's got like three fingers you know it is what it is it's okay i'm gonna make this thing happen watch this so if the background what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make the background black okay and i'm gonna go over here i'm gonna go to edit photo and i'm gonna use this bg remover tool so i'm gonna go over here bg remover and it's gonna remove should be all the different white areas canva is not always good with this it's good sometimes, but in this case, it worked well, right? So here we have the image. We have the black. Hey, guys, sorry to pop in like this. If you want to see the rest of this video, I'll leave a link in the description. It will be labeled rest of this video. You can go ahead and check it out. The reason why I'm putting the rest of this video on a different channel is because the main goal of this video was already achieved. I showed you guys how to create some insane art using specific key concepts within stable diffusions prompting all right guys i'll talk to you guys later if you want to check it out like i said and want to see the rest of the video how i created this t-shirt design check it out all right i'll see you soon peace out bye